Hey kids, welcome to Crossways Kid Venture Kids Online. I'm Lauren and this is Maya. Hi everybody! In case you're new at Kid Venture Kids Online, I should let you know that Kid Venture Kids is a great place for kids to learn about God, faith, and even life apps. What are life apps? Life apps are just our way of talking about what God can work out inside of you to change the world around you. Things like love, respect, and forgiveness. And don't forget that we do that with a lot of faith-filled fun to help you grow your faith in Jesus Christ. And don't forget, putting your faith into action kid style. Hey, you can even stand up, sing, and dance with the worship music. And now it's time to get started. Let's start with a drum roll on your knees, everybody. Three, two...
Dear God, it's been a long time since I sat here and wrote to you. It brings back a lot of memories. You know I don't like camping, but for some reason, my new little brother and sister love it. That's why way back in October, I told them I'd take them up to the Highlands and camp. I knew I could come in over the break and mom and Dave wanted to leave town, so it was gonna be perfect until I saw the weather forecast. I mean, camping is bad anytime but camping in the cold with two little kids? No way. The trouble was, Riley and Jones had their hearts set on it. Did you see those little backpacks? Adorable. I had this brilliant idea to do a kind of puppet show to tell them how we couldn't go. That went well. Not. I think I broke their little hearts. It made me laugh, but I'm sure to them I seemed like an awful person. That's when I remembered that I did like one kind of camping. I brought them down for the rooms and they didn't even want to talk to me until I showed them that the camping trip was back on and we were gonna camp in the living room. We ate popcorn, we had s'mores. 
We even had a pretend campfire. It was so much fun. God, thank you for my family. They have treated me so well. I hope I can always be kind to them in the same way that you've been kind to me. Love, Valerie. Hey, what's the big idea? Kind to people who are different from you. This week, we're talking about adventures and kindness. Plus, we'll hear an amazing story about a pretty adventurous road trip. This way. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. And today, we're talking about kindness. Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. Hey, nice backpack. You get ready for school early? Nope. I'm going camping at Lake Wanasmackasquita. I love camping. Orienteering, setting up rain flies, cooking in the old Dutch oven, hobo dinners and cowboy coffee. You know what I'm talking about, right? I've never been camping before. Oh, first time for everything. I mean, the real trick is just in the preparation, making sure you pack everything you need. Okay. That, huh, I've got covered. Okay, let's see what you got. First, bug spray. A little cold for mosquitoes, but better safe than itchy. Then, what else? there's my Nintendo Switch. There's no electricity in the woods, Sebastian. Then you're not gonna like my next item. What's that? Uh, my star nightlight and sound machine. You know that there's stars and sounds of nature. Well, I also packed some non-electric stuff. Great. Um, my knitting kit, a tennis racket, a golf club, got my snake. <laughs> oh, my chicken, you know. We got my, my chair, uh, you know, kinda need that. Uh, my hockey stick, my lucky hat, my backup lucky hat. Mm. My pogo stick. Did you know that? Yeah. Oh, and of course, can't forget Steve. Sebastian. What in the world? You know, in case I wanted to make a snack. A snack. Maybe something desserty. That is actually doable. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. So, what are we making? We're going to make a solar oven to bake s'mores in. Sweet. Literally. For this project, you'll need a cardboard box, aluminum foil, some plastic wrap, a glue stick, some tape, a ruler, something to cut with, a stick, and a marker. First, take your box and use a ruler to trace out a lid about an inch from the edge, like this. Then, cut it out. Remember to ask an adult to help. Careful. I will. There. Next, we'll use the glue stick to line the inside of the box with aluminum foil. There we go. Make sure you cover it really well with glue.
Okay, now we'll attach the aluminum foil to the inside of the box. Oh, like a real oven. The metal reflects the heat. You got it. Make sure the foil is as smooth as possible. Perfect. Then what? Then use double-sided tape to tape two layers of plastic wrap to the inside of the outside edge of the box top. To hold the heat inside. Nice and soft. Very nice. And now we have the second layer. <laughs> Do you like baking, Sebastian? To a certain degree. <laughs> ah, ah, oh ah, boy. Ah, ah. Incoming dad joke. <laughs> and done. So, how do we plug it in? Kidding! We use the stick to hold open the lid so the sunlight bounces down into the oven. It's the sun's heat that warms up our s'more. Spoken like a camping pro. Now, all we have to do is head outside and set these babies up. I can see it already, eating s'mores and telling stories around the campfire at Camp Wanna Smack a Skeeter. <laughs> Speaking of stories, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the Gospel of Luke, the third book of the New Testament. Luke wrote about the life and ministry of Jesus. We find Jesus doing what he does a lot, talking to people, young and old, sick and healthy, powerful and not so powerful. And when Jesus spoke to people, he often used parables. A parable is a fancy word for story. More specifically, a story that uses things people know about to explain something about God's kingdom. One day, a religious expert showed up to talk to Jesus. This guy thought he was smarter than Jesus. Spoiler alert, he wasn't. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. In Luke, we discover a conversation between Jesus and an expert in religion, who is really just an expert in missing the point. People like him weren't happy with how Jesus was changing things and they wanted to trap him in his own words. So this expert asked, Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? And like a good rabbi, a Jewish teacher, Jesus answered the question with a question. What is written in the law? This man knew his stuff. He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. <laughs> You've answered correctly. Do that and you will live. There's a difference between smart and smarty pants because this expert thought he'd stump Jesus with one more question. And who is my neighbor? Jesus answered the man by telling him a story, a parable. The story went something like this. Once upon a time, there was a man who traveled along a road, a dangerous road, in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, some robbers jumped out from behind a rock and hurt the man. They took everything he had and left him on the side of the road, sad, hurt, and all alone. Sometime later, a priest came along, a man whose whole job was to help people follow God. The priest saw the hurt man. Help! Help me! He's a priest, so of course he's gonna help the guy, right? I mean, it's the right thing to do, but no. The priest pretended the hurt man wasn't even there and walked past him on the other side of the road. Not kind, not cool. Please. Then along came a Levite, a man who helped people worship God. He saw the hurt man. Help, please. But just like the priest, the Levite walked right on by as far from the hurt man as he could get. I'm 
right here. Once again, not kind, not cool. But then a Samaritan man came along. Now, at this time, people from Samaria did not get along with Jewish people. It had been this way for hundreds of years. In fact, Jewish people would walk way around just to avoid walking by a Samaritan town. Oh no, don't look this way. But this Samaritan cared about people more than he cared about old grudges. He felt sorry for the hurt man and stopped to help. Oh, they roughed you up good, but you're gonna be okay. I got you. The Samaritan man's kindness didn't stop there. He even carried the hurt man on his own donkey to an inn, which is like a hotel. There, the man could rest and get better. The Samaritan even paid the owner of the inn to take care of the hurt man until he was well again. Take good care of him. And if this money doesn't cover your expenses, I'll pay you back when I return. When Jesus finished telling his story, the religious expert said nothing. Then Jesus asked him one more question. Which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? The proud expert who had tried to trick Jesus just minutes earlier was forced to humbly admit the answer. The one, the one who felt sorry for him. Go and do as he did. Jesus made it clear your neighbor isn't only the person down the street. It's not just your friend. Your neighbor is anyone, anyone who needs your help and kindness. The end. Wow, the Samaritan helped the man even though there was nothing in it for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it even cost him time and money. I bet even his own people were mad at him for helping. You don't see that kind of kindness every day. I like that Jesus used his story. I mean, he could have said a lot of stuff to tell the expert that he was even smarter. But instead, he used a story that anyone could understand. Jesus did that a lot. So, what's our part in the story? Kindness is showing others they're valuable by how you treat them. And one of the most powerful forms of kindness is showing love to people who are different from you. Like if there's a new kid who comes to your school from a different country or speaks a different language, you can ask them to sit at your lunch table. Or if someone thinks or acts differently than you, you can choose to listen and be kind to them, even if you don't agree with them. You can even be friendly to someone on the soccer team that just beat your team. Easier said than done sometimes. True, but remember, while you can't be best friends with everyone, you can still show kindness to everyone. You guys got this on lock. Peace. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing. Be kind to people who are different from you. Okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is that we have successfully baked s'mores in our new oven. So what's the bad news? We have also brought in ants. What? Are they on me? Are they on me? Thanks for joining us in the story lab. No, seriously, do, do you see any ants? See Sebastian. you next time. Sebastian! Oh my. It's so good. Colossians 3.12 You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Thank you.
excuse me? I misunderstood? Are you hearing this? The audacity. Uh, yes, yes. Let me uh, see if I got this correct. I purchased a stick from your website and... You know what, you know what? You tell me what this product is called. A walking stick. That's right, a walking stick. And let me ask, what is the subject of a walking stick? Oh, oh, you don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> well, let me break it down for you. The subject is the stick, and the word walking is a present participle used as an adjective to describe the action of the stick. Thank you. I've had this walking stick for 12 hours, and I have not seen it take a single step. Not a single Who step. Who ever heard of a walking stick that doesn't even walk? No. I need to know what you're gonna do about this to make it right, and I want you to call me back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a falling stick now. No, fine, falling stick. You want to go to brunch? Yeah. All right. Weasel was his nickname. Yeah, that's right. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And welcome to the, the So and So Show. Show. Well, John, it's been a fun month. Yeah. We've been learning all about kindness. Yes, and we've learned a lot about hiking in the great outdoors. That's right. I'd like to think that we've become a couple of experts. Indeed. And when you become a couple of self proclaimed experts, you have to share that knowledge. Absolutely. So that's why we're starting a podcast. No, we're not. No, no we're, we're not, not starting, starting a, podcast. a podcast. I mean, we have our own show, so we can just. Take oh. the next few minutes and tell everyone what we've learned. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you go get your camping supplies and I will go get mine. Perfect. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Ultimate, Ultimate Camping Guide with Brandon and John. Looking good. What buddy. are you wearing? Only the best. You're in a tuxedo. Yeah, with designer hiking boots. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Why don't you show uh, the rest of us in here uh, what you brought in your camping starter kit. A starter set? Yeah, I assume you have more than just uh, that. <laughs> no, and what are you talking about? You're, you're wearing a tuxedo and hiking boots. Uh, designer hiking boots. Whatever. Whatever. And that's not all I have. Okay, okay. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to take this over. <sighs> so. When you're camping, it's important to travel light. For shelter, I have my lightweight tent. There we go. I have a sleeping bag packed as tight as possible to not take up too much space. Let's see, I have a waterproof matches, a water bottle and water filter. You don't want to be carrying a lot of water with you, so you'll want to filter some along the way. Oh, I carry all of my water with me. <laughs> what? That's going to really weigh you down. Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> Just let me handle this, all right. Hey, the best part of camping is unplugging. <laughs> and there, there's a good chance that you'll be out of cell range, so you want to make sure that you have a good map and a compass. Yeah, I'm not so sure you should be the one claiming to be an expert because there's an app for that. John, just trust me on this one, all right? Of course. All right, you need a small thing of toiletries, uh, biodegradable TP if you don't want to use leaves, yeah. <laughs> and a small shovel. Wait, 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 what, what, what is that for? You know, for... <laughs> no! Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, fine. Okay, so finally, uh, your food. Yeah, I only take fresh vegetables and meat to grill. <laughs> well, you're not gonna be able to keep that cold. I'm sure there's a way to do that. I think what you're talking about is car camping. <laughs> I guess that's okay, car camping counts. When you're car camping, you can take a few extra things. So, John... Hey there, hey there, yeah. Oh, no, no, go ahead and back it down the driveway, Earl. <laughs> what is that? Oh, you'll see. There she is, huh? John, that is not camping. Well, we'll let the people decide. 
Now, just outside, we have our 35-foot Dreamliner Class A motorhome. You won't have to worry about finding water because you can carry it in your 80-gallon fresh water tank. 80 gallons? Yeah, that doesn't include the 300 gallons of water that are in the hot tub. Hot tub? Yes. Oh, man. You're gonna need to relax after you hike. You can stretch or cool off in a creek. Well, sure, but you can also cool off with your top-of-the-line dual air conditioning units oh. and then sit down oh. and watch a movie on your 75 inch ultra high def TV screen. Or just, or just look at the birds or the stars or, or read a book by firelight. I don't go camping not to have all the comforts of home. I go camping to treat myself. But that's not camping. You're just moving a, a luxury hotel near the woods. Camping in an RV is the only way to go camping. It is not. I'm not pooping in the woods. It's a natural human function. There's nothing natural about that. You know, I, I Shovels. Don't, I don't even think you like like camping. Yes, I do. I just think camping is different than you do. <sighs> I can't anymore. It's Bible story time. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Hey fellas, how's it going? Do you like camping? I do. I mean, sometimes I like to go out with just the bare minimum of supplies. Exactly. But my aunt and uncle have this really nice RV that I get to use occasionally, which is also a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I usually like to car camp, though, where I sleep in a tent, but I can keep all my stuff in my car. Any way you can get outside and enjoy God's creation is A-OK -okay with me. Well, I guess so. Do you have a story for us today? I sure do, but I think I'm going to need your help. You up for it? Absolutely. Great. Our story today comes from Luke chapter 10. It is often referred to as the parable of the Good Samaritan. A religious leader asked Jesus what he needed to have eternal life. Jesus asked the man what the scripture said, and the man replied with two verses. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus told the man if he did those things, he would have life. But then the man asked this question, who is my neighbor? And Jesus responded with this story. There was a man traveling down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, the road from Jerusalem to Jericho had a reputation for being extremely dangerous. It was a very narrow road, so it was a place that robbers could easily attack. <laughs> Give me all your money. Wait. What? Uh, we're gonna do this the hard way, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Ow! You haven't had enough yet. <laughs> Stop! Uh, someone help me! Uh, I'll take that! Uh, <laughs> oh. Good luck surviving in this heat. Hey, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Somebody! I'm going to die! Robbers had come and stolen from the man and beat him up and left him to die. But then, a priest came walking by. Someone that was a religious leader and knew the scriptures about helping those who were suffering. Surely, he would do the right thing. Well, let's see. Ooh. Yeah. Stop making that horrible noise. Burger, burger. Ah. Hey, burger. Uh, there's nowhere for me to cross. Uh, I can't look. Uh, why don't they make these roads wider? Oh well, here goes nothing. Uh, 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 I don't 
know if it was quite that dramatic, but in the story, the priest did not help the man. But up next was a Levite. He probably knew a lot of the scriptures. The priest didn't help, but surely the Levite would. Uh, nope. Uh, 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 oh. 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 Nope. Jesus then told of a final person, a Samaritan. Now, it's important to know that Samaritans in that time were considered outcasts. The people who were listening to Jesus tell this story probably had an idea of Samaritans being untrustworthy and beneath them. So it may have been a little of a shock to hear of a Samaritan turning up in the story. The Samaritan came and found the man lying on the ground and he took care of his wounds. Here you go, friend. Jesus says the Samaritan then put the man on his donkey. Okay, friend, let's get you on that donkey. Thank you, friend. Okay, help me a little bit. Okay, okay, Just okay. give me your hands. Ah! Oh! Okay. Okay, the donkey's got me. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! The pain! The agony! Alley oop! Ah! Oh! 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 Uh. Come along, donkey. Jesus goes on to say that the Samaritan not only took care of the man's wounds on the road, but that he brought him to an inn and took care of him there, and the next day paid the innkeeper to take care of him while he was gone. Jesus then asked, which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? And the man who asked the question replied, the one who felt sorry for him. Jesus told the man, go and do as he did. The end. Great story. Yeah, th thanks for helping me out. Our pleasure. You know, I have to say, I've heard that story a few times, but it's always good to hear again. Same. It's really cool to see the Samaritan be kind to someone who is so different. I mean, I have a hard time being kind to my friends sometimes when I think about something differently than they do. Right, but Jesus calls us to be kind to everyone, not just the people who are like you, but even people who are different from you. That's awesome. Hey, thanks for the story. You bet, later. Okay, so maybe camping out in an RV isn't the only way to go camping. Are you kidding? Air conditioning in the woods would be amazing. I, I want to try it your way next time. And I just want to get out there and rough it for a change. You know, really experience the wide open world. I guess it's possible to be different and, and still be kind to one another. You know what, I think you're right. Yeah. So, reveal the question. How can you care for people who are different from you? There are lots of ways we are different from one another. Mm -hmm. uh, we look different, we act different, dress different, think different. Yeah. Um, how can we care for each other? Yeah, maybe there's someone you feel like you have nothing in common with. Maybe you can eat lunch with them and ask them what they like to do for fun. Yeah, you might know someone who doesn't speak the same language as you. Uh, you, you can have them teach you some new words and then, then you can do the same. Or, or maybe you know someone who doesn't look exactly like you. Find some things you have in common. It's important we care for everyone the way Jesus did. Yeah, and like the Good Samaritan. Yes, so go and talk about it. How can you care for people who are different from you? And we'll see you next time time on the, the so, so and so, so show. show now my friend to the woods i'll drive all right i'll bring my shovel you it's best to be prepared right i'll Where go we're first going, we don't need shovels hey, hey we just got some handwritten correspondence in our so and so show mailbag okay it's a box but all right uh, this is from Olivia in California. All right, here we go. 
Awesome, California. Right. What does Olivia have to say? Dear John and Brandon, I watch your shows all the time. Oh. And I have your devotional. Oh, cool. When you read this letter, can you read it on the so-and-so show? I don't know. I'm we'll sorry, we it. can't. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if you already made one for the week, please read it the next week. Okay. I would love that. By the way, my name is Olivia. Also, I love the Bible stories. Yes. Thanks, your friend Olivia. All right. All right. Thanks, Olivia. Yeah. Thanks for the letter. If we can read it on this show, we will. But yeah. I, I don't know if we're going to have time. Yeah. I mean, maybe during the credits? Yeah, maybe, maybe we can work that in next week. Next week? Okay. So tune in next week to see cool. Olivia's letter. <laughs> hey, what's the big idea? Be kind to people who are different from you.